Kyle here for Hear Me Out. Um, we're here at the Funkin' Waffles in Syracuse, and we're with Barroom Philosophers. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming out. We really do appreciate you, you guys sitting in with us. So, how did you guys get started? Uh, back in 2014, we, uh, well, me and, me and Josh had met, and Josh had previously met Tyler and Brendan at college. Uh, me and Josh jammed together a few times, and uh, I had the opportunity to meet Tyler. And then uh, Brendan afterwards, and we got together, started playing music together, and you guys are up in Oswego, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these guys yep, were on Oswego campus. And then uh, we got together, started playing, getting like an original or uh, a cover set list together. And uh, Josh booked a gig in Oswego, and we got ready for that gig, and uh, played cover music for a while, and then probably like a year later, we wrote six original songs and started getting more into original music, bringing us to this point now where we're primarily original band. Have you guys been playing for a long time? Were you guys self-taught, or did you learn by going to like class or something? I, I think it really depends. I think each of us it's yeah, different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for I think all of us There's did our like, own thing, yeah. like you know, getting into it. I took a couple classes in Oswego, and um, we all kind of just came together and were you know just trying to hammer out songs for this gig, and we had to you know. The gasoline, mm -hmm. like like we just hammer it I, out for a couple of weeks. And yeah, I sang in church. You do the piano. And yeah, the I took piano out. lessons and then I self taught uh, the bass guitar. Yeah. Well, I joined up with these guys after. What your young years were playing? My young years, I started playing. I started I started up playing drums. I was in the fifth grade band, the percussion, mm -hmm. and uh, picked up guitar for a little while. I was probably like thirteen years old, and then just kind of got after it for a while. Um, and I started taking keys. I learned how to play on a Hammond B3 when I was 21, maybe? From a guy who played in a band in Detroit called Vantage Point, played with Joe Cocker and shit. He was gnarly. I didn't know you were a drummer. <laughs> yeah, 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 I didn't know you were a drummer. Gnarly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. Brandon? Yeah, for me, I, I started off in a, like elementary school playing percussion. And then when I was 13, I uh, got my first drum kit and... Uh, I pretty much taught myself from there, just listening to music that I liked, that I wanted to play along with. And then uh, I ended up meeting up with Sean in high school, and we started doing a little thing together. And uh, oh, it was a couple years after we, we got together that uh, we had Sean join us. So, yeah. I should, when, when, did I, when did I start? It's been about a year now. Which is crazy. Just like, you two years. played in a band. No, it's been like two, two years. years. Yeah. It's two years. Yeah, now it's two years yeah. that Sean's been with us. So, it's all right. Yep. <laughs> so, what was the first song that you guys learned to play? Had to have been a cover, probably. As a as a whole band, right? Oh, yeah. Because yeah, we went, that fir that first gig that we did, we had to play four hours. Oh, yeah, in the, we, with the we were so us. unprepared. We, like, <laughs> we practiced every day for two weeks before that gig. It was a cover Learning. song, so it was probably like maybe it was like there was more than one, but. Use Yo, me, superstition, ain't no sunshine. Ain't no sunshine. Ain't no sunshine. Could have been walking the left side. Yeah, yeah, a lot too. Yeah. Yeah. Velvet Underground. Or no, that was, that was post Velvet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> now, growing up as musicians, were you around um, a lot of music lovers? Or um, did you have musicians in your family that kind of like inspired you to get into music? I know that my, my dad was a avid listener. I, back in the day, I don't know if anyone remembers, in the 90s, there was like this Columbia House thing where you could... Order 13 CDs, all you needed was like one person's social security numbers. My dad took <laughs> all of our social security numbers. And like, so we had like 60 CDs and then right. he rented, uh, rented the Fisher sound system. So every morning I wake up the Buffalo Soldier, long story short. So, <laughs> and, that, and, then, and then eventually That's my father got me into Sublime as well. So yeah, yeah my dad right. definitely influenced me a lot uh, musically, but no actual musicians in my family. I know that's not the same story for these guys though. Right. I had, um, my grandmother was like a, super gnarly organ player. I remember like early memories, they had this, uh, she had this Lowry and it just, it lit up like a stock car, like on the inside. <laughs> it, was like, it was like an airplane, like a cockpit. It was the coolest thing I ever, like in all these LEDs pulsing. Um, so that was like my earliest, I think, exposure to real music. But um, my uncle, he was a blues cat, blues guitar player down in Dallas in that circuit for decades, you know? So he's the one who really pursued when you start playing guitar. Right. And that was the real impetus. That's where the seed was planted, as it were. Right. What speaks to you guys most about music in general? Not just your music, but music, like, for example, you said Sublime was big for you. 
Um, what kind of speaks to you? I know for yeah. all of us, it's like it's, moving it's a necessity. Yeah. Like, was there, there's like some old like quote, maybe it's a Jimmy Page or something. Probably misattributed it to somebody, but it was like <laughs> where um, where words fail, music speaks or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's a horrible cliche, but it's true, man. It's fucking true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. And you would say that's what keeps you guys playing and. Keep oh, on yeah. going, right? Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I feel like everyone relates to being like an angry teen at some point where you shut yourself in your room and just blasted music. Too. <laughs> and, that's what, <laughs> and that's what got you yeah. through. I think that's, that's like, yeah, that's what gets you through it. Right, right, yeah. right. You know, something that I started to notice was like, through our music, I've seen people come together, which I, I don't know, I think is great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For us, it's about reaching out to other people in the crowd. Like that right. one, <clears throat> one guy at a show that comes up to you and is like, yo! That was so amazing, and he has all these things to say. Like that makes the night, you know. Right. Yeah. That's just, how you know. Just one person saying that, like, yeah. you really touch them. It means so much, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like cyclical. It always ha- it, you know. That's there's always some sort of music that pursues somebody to like react, and just like it's such a positive fashion. Right. And the fa- and like the fact that we can contribute to that cycle. Mm-hmm. I think it, it feels awkward. It even does still like to have people like you know appreciate what you do, but it's like if, without it, you would have been. It really helps. Like um, yeah. it's a driving force in it, especially yeah. right, what we do. So, do you guys um, practice often, and do you guys hang outside outside of practicing and doing gigs together? Yeah, we practice yeah. twice a week. At least. Yeah. Yeah. we it's try to at least, least at least you know right. it's a bare minimum like usually twice a week. Yeah, right. practice in Baldwinsville at his house. It's yeah. a really it's a really like um, familial uh, atmosphere, and it's and there's always Josh's mother will cook us like a bunch of like, Honduran <laughs> food. She's from Honduras, right. so she'll always cook us a ton of Honduran food and just yeah. like. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so it's so communal. It's so communal. It's, it's like it's you know we're a family, man. How did you guys come up with the name Barroom Philosophers? That's that's more of a day. 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 I was <laughs> doing some. I forgot what we were. I just got out of work and I was with this uh, guy that it's just some dude that does DJ work that I was working with and uh, we went to some bar and there's this guy that kind of looked like. The big Lebowski, like the dude almost. <laughs> right. And uh, he was sitting there just like drunk as heck talking about everything. And uh, <laughs> life's <laughs> answer. He was giving yeah. life's answers. Yeah. So it was like it's a very drunk and people. loose, like, you know, philosophy. And I was sober and I really dug it. I'm like, oh, that's sick. Like, it's a Byron philosopher. And my buddy's like, that's a great name for a band. So uh, eventually when we started a band, I was like, Hey guys, you call it Barroom Philosophers? <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, I don't know about that. Let's That's see a what we can work, work, dude. As a bar, right. and like, 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 oh, yeah, the, the name, the name, it's just one of a kind. Because yeah. you hear a lot of bands like, like for example, Blink One Eight Two. Then you mm-hmm. have Plus Forty Four, and then Seven Forty One, and all all the right. bands want to use numbers. Yeah. But Barroom Philosopher has like kind of goes or around a, the tip yeah, of the tongue. Mean, a lot of bands yeah. want like that that token one name thing, like. Nirvana or Sublime, like right. that. and and it kind of breaks outside of that too, which is neat. And it's and and it's phonetically pleasing. There's a lot of syllables, but it flows <laughs> <Yeah>. well. <laughs> you want to get it's some rhythm? It's <laughs> <talk to you>. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, getting into your guys' recorded music, I know that you just released a new single um, in January, and you released an album last year as well. Um, what was that like for you guys, recording the album and the new single? <laughs> it made us grow as a band. It was a yeah, lot, totally. a lot yeah. of learning. Yeah, it was eye opening too. We what is that expression live they band. use in the studio? It's always under the microscope. They're, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna scrub you clean. Everyone gets yeah. in the hot seat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 in, it's it's in. We're used to hearing ourselves at like maximum volume on a stage, yeah. and and the studio environment, you can hear yourself crisply you can and hear perfectly. Yourself. So. There was like an adjustment to that whole thing, but I think we uh, we fell into place pretty quick. Yeah, that's it's a really straight ego killer. Like, yeah, yeah this, if you can, if you go in with an ego, it's just gonna be oh, totally you... smushed out of you. <laughs> you thought you were good? Yeah, like Bam. Yeah. <laughs> not that good. Yeah. It's all us. Got work it's all to us do. to work and grow as a band. Yeah. Right. And, uh, like we definitely worked through some adversity in the studio. I was I was really sick with mono, um, and there was just like certain songs, especially on the, on the full length. That we hadn't quite developed enough to be an attainable specimen mm-hmm. under, the, under the microscope, right. as Josh yeah, right. put it. Right. Um, and it just—it was a humbling experience, and it just taught us, like you know, how to write songs. Do you guys have a favorite track off of 
what you've written so far. Ooh, I think we yeah. should have a different one, dude. Yeah. I think probably, probably right. right. I, I mean, see what this is. is. I'm the full length. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about it. Because I feel like for all of us, Angel, we could pretty gr- <laughs> much agree that like we love that right now. It's definitely probably Angel, one of my, my favorite. It's definitely our favorite one. recording. Yeah. Because yeah. we've grown sure. so much. And yeah. And you can, you can hear the growth in it. I know. I don't know. That's tough. There's different man. parts of songs. There's so many, to, you know? so many each song. But for, I guess like playing dumb, playing dumb, playing yeah. dumb, like I, really kind of wowed me. I love that song. You know, like that There's song was always song. it was always a hitter for That's us. That's why we put it first. Like, it was always a powerful it. hitter. Okay. But something about hearing it after the studio, like on the CD with all the percussion and the the effects the and like we it was just like the B3 yo, dude. Yeah. and yeah he was playing the B3 like it was just like yo we can do something <laughs> yeah. we can do something yeah, for real. Yeah. that's my like thought that. well I me for turning it on I was sitting there I was listening to the song and like I told you guys I was like damn but th- this hits me here like yeah. this is like me listening to like Red Hot Chili Peppers when I was a kid all over again yeah. it was Cheers really good, and I actually that's really cool. love, really, cool. really love that song. So you guys absolutely killed it with that. And, well, the whole album's awesome because when I see Thank when you. I saw the cover, I first mistake mistakenly thought it was a Chili Peppers cover because mm-hmm. oh, if yeah. you if you look at um, like their that. old yeah. school stuff yeah. like Mother's yeah, Milk yeah. and all that, yeah. I was like Up with Mofo. I uh, what, uh, free, <laughs> what what's the one Freaky Styley? That's the yeah. album. That's what it reminded yeah. me of. That artwork like, was local too. That was a, a, a yeah. friend of ours, James Coldiron. He's a tattoo. Timeless. He's a tattoo yeah. over at Timeless Tattoo in Beeville. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, J- so yeah. James. We went to high school with him. Yeah, too. Yeah, James. Yeah. James is like you know one of our boys from way back, and uh, he just kind of put that together. It was I think it was acrylics. Yeah, it, it, it really it's it's great beautiful. Job. We gave him some. <laughs> we gave we gave him some like half-assed like doodled paper. And he like just totally that was just, my like, awesome to life. It's cool. He brought it to life. Dude, that's bad. It was like he really, like, he cool. really captured everything. Just yeah, so you he, know, he brought it all in together. James, James, like brought the vision to life. So yeah. he thought yeah. that he thought that the the, the, the I had the bridge in Barnesville, the trestle. I drew, I drew it like really crudely, and he made it into a swing <laughs> set. <laughs> <laughs> that's I awesome. forgot about that. That's that's awesome. Awesome. Sweet, though. Um, <laughs> so. After, you know, everything you guys did in the recording studio, is there anything differently that you guys would do? Uh, Definitely. It's more just coming, <laughs> coming in more prepared. Yeah. 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 The, stu- the studio kind of, in a sense, becomes a race against the clock, and you realize you get there and you don't have the whole song together, and now you're spending time in the studio and you only have so much time. And it's you could have done that. Time is very much more yeah, in the time studio. Is so, bad, so I mean, yeah, so the, the tighter you are, the quicker you can bang those songs out, the better chance you have of moving on to the next yeah. one. I and being able uh, to get creative. With we it. realize yeah. that rushing it is probably a little crazy too now, though. With yeah, I mean, it. collectively, it's just really made us like, responsible in, our, in, in, in going yeah. in there and getting mm-hmm. ready to take care of business. So can you guys describe your songwriting process? Like, are you guys different in a way? Um... I know, for example, there's some people that like to close themselves off from the world for like sometimes a week, and then they <laughs> write like a whole album. I'm not saying that you guys are like that, but like there, there's people that actually do that. What would you say, your guys? Well, we go into this like? like we go into this remote cabin in the Adirondacks, and we we, uh, we chop our own wood. And then, uh, <laughs> we uh, it's very organic, off the cuff. Yeah. Oh, is it, you guys really do that? No. 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 <laughs> we, that's the dream. That's the ultimate dream. We'll have a cabin. And Sometimes we have lyrics. lyrics. He's got lyrics piled up. Sometimes yeah. we get yeah. like a, a a beat down first, like something that yeah. sounds cool, and then we just throw. So so there's, jam, there's, just, there's a few writers in the band that do lyrics. Like I, I write lyrics. Sean writes lyrics. Brendan writes lyrics. Josh, Josh writes lyrics. Ty writes like a lot of the yeah. lyrics, like playing dumb that you're so fond of. That dun, dun, you know the piano riff. That's like, you know, Ty's a really kind of guy. Ties. A lot of stuff that he is, you know, so all of us have a different, you know, inputs into the songs and they come together collectively. I don't think anyone's been like, hey, this is how your part's going to go. This right. is how your part's going to go. This is how your part's going to go. Everyone just starts playing and then it's like, all right, this is what I'm going to add to it. And then we're all, after that point, we fine tune it like, hey, wouldn't this be cool? Wouldn't that be nice? And, you know, some things are go, some things stay. Like almost like a jam session. It really yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's It like, kind of is. We're just, you so know. So like, I got this cool riff. Yeah. Well, I got these lyrics. So like, oh, there's a song over there. We'll catch somebody even just, get, like, goofing around. Yeah. You yeah. know, I always, I always catch yeah, Josh yeah, sometimes. I'm like, oh, that was cool. What is that? Keep playing that. Yeah, that could be a little yeah. riff. And then eventually there, it becomes like, structured. Yeah. And then you just get out of the lyric book, and I'm like, let's do this. So it really is organic and off the cuff, but it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. That's what it's all about. So, like, music brings just a different kind of 
aura to people and when people write music it isn't about like the money or anything it's about having fun and enjoying what you do right so, it's, a, it's mean, a song too for us it's the song like it's got to be mm-hmm. an experience when we put it together right. and we yeah. like we hear it like that we're just like that's one day that it really hits yeah. and we're all right. like, yeah. and we're like right. this is it yeah, <laughs> um how long does it take you guys to write songs and are you guys writing any new songs currently yep Yes. It's, yes, we are. It's, it's yeah. man, it's different for every song, really. Right. There's some we keep on the back burner for so long because we just can't really, <laughs> two years. Can't right, really right, get right, it together, right. and then you know we'll come back to it. We might even play it live. We'll play a couple once, shows. And they'll be like, oh, I don't know, that really felt that. Hold it back. Yeah. <laughs> but there's songs like that that go back in the back burner, and then you know eventually, eventually we go to practice, out. and we're like, all right, let's bring it back. Let's, let's do something jam on it. And the fresh. You know, it's almost like we grow into it or yeah. something, you know? Like yeah. It's like, we yeah. have a cool idea, but we're not quite well, there. Some of the stuff that's on the album, we're still changing that stuff. Yeah. Up, you know? yeah. So. yeah. So we've talked about you guys in the studio. What's it like to perform in front of an audience? Especially, like, people that have listened to your album since it first came out and have become really big fans of you guys. It's exhilarating. It's the biggest trip ever. It's crazy. Yeah, people, yeah, sing along. Seeing people sing your lyrics. People and sing and along. It's like, oh crap, that's, yeah. that's pretty they awesome. <laughs> <laughs> think, think of, yes. Like people like this. Like, <laughs> think of the sweetest, sweetest nectar you could ever imagine, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's really good. It's like ambrosia. Man. Yes. You know? yeah, it's so, super appreciated. Yeah. 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 It's, it, Definitely is. I mean, like, it's probably like the most humbling experience that you guys can uh, ask for. We, we, we put all of our heart and work so hard at this, and then to see people like, you know, give that love back to us, it, just, yeah. just bouncing, full man, circle, man. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. It, it, it's just, there's something about having that palpable energy in the air, especially if you're at a, at a packed house, man. Everybody's, everybody's stoked, everybody's ready to mm-hmm. just to vibe to the music. And, uh, I mean, like, it's it, it, there's like this symbiotic relationship between the performer and the yeah. crowd, and you just yeah, like, uh, and everybody, yeah. and each each party's energy is dependent on what the other like party is doing. Absolutely. Yeah, and you just keep elevating each other, and it's the it's fucking awesome. I think we're big on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. getting each other pumped we'll up. We'll feel the crowd and nice that the crowd is really feeling even. us. Yeah. We're really we play better. We're we're feeling each other better. Yeah, no yeah. doubt, no doubt. So. What is your guys' favorite song to perform? Any, I would say any song that has, that like we've really put the time in to structuring. You know, where we have moments and we know where all those moments shift. We literally just beat mm-hmm. the shit out of it. Yeah, like just, yeah. Those, those ones are, they're awesome. They're a lot of fun and they're fun for the mm-hmm. audience too, I think. They bring back a lot of memories. Yeah, yeah I remember when we were really hard <laughs> on this. Yeah. Feel my pain. <laughs> <laughs> the song was just one riff. God bless us only fangas. <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys ever get nervous? before um a gig definitely every time so get the jitters yeah because sometimes that's fuel though the anxiety the anxiety, <laughs> anxiety, the anxiety, anxiety makes you stand it's like, like, like you know what is it fight or flight or whatever yeah it's right. like when you got a hot drink man it's the best feeling in the world <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you, you got that special somebody ready to take out and just that moment you're walking on stage it's like when you're just about to see that person <laughs> and, then, and you're just like <laughs> It's a, it's a best feeling, dude. It's like, yeah. well, you gonna get it. Just let you know. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna learn today. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what keeps you guys sane, would you say, with getting over your nervousness? I mean, when we figure that out, we'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like right when you walk on stage, like for me, the first couple I, of I get the anxiety, but like as soon as we yeah. start playing... Everything sinks in. It's, it's, it's like, gonna be all right. right. Everything's it's gonna fine. be all right. As soon as B gets more on the high hat, dude, you just yeah. like <laughs> you, just, you just sink into the cut and you're like, okay, we're 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 in. Have you guys ever had a rough show? And how did you guys recover? <laughs> never. Oh, 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 we have not, not once, dude. We have a lot. <laughs> they were all flawless. <laughs> yeah. We're perfect. Don't yeah. worry about it. It's all part of it. Live entertainment. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, we've, we've, we've had a, we've had a lot. Of them. We we, yeah. we played a lot of shows. You know. It's uh, that's usually like we go. You know, it's coming at practice. Like that's the practice we're gonna go in. It's like, yo, guys, we gotta. There's this here, that there. Like, you know mm-hmm. at practice, like, it's coming that day. Like, you're waiting all day, like, to get to practice, and we're going to work all those little kinks mm-hmm. out. Like they were saying earlier, if one person's off, it throws, can throw everybody off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, every, everybody has a bad show. Like, nobody's impervious to that. Mm-hmm. And but you it's say- a matter of just, of, of just, like, dealing with it and trying to make the, the best out of it that you can. And, um... 
We're talking just going back to the, yeah, oh, go back to the drawing board on, on, on Monday, dude. You know? Yeah, we're perfectionists. So I mean, I'm, I'm a perfe- I, I know that I am. In my opinion, like I've, every show has its flaws. You know, like I've, every show has its flaws. But I mean, as long as people say they enjoy it, that's the only thing I can use to gauge it. You know. Right. Right. I don't know if you can call any of us. If we get past with like a 95 or 97, yeah, I don't think you can call any of us satisfied. I don't yeah. think. Right, we all want yeah. we all want keep, more, the better. and that's the hunger to play more. Yeah, but a lot of that comes down to like what happened in the studio, dude. That's like that. They got to instill yeah. this. You don't want to get mm-hmm. complacent. Yeah, yeah. like oh, we're great. We come out, we can't do it any better. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Always, yeah. Better. Always Someone improving. like do you have ears? <laughs> right. Right. What do you think? What do you think of the um, music scene here in Syracuse? Would you say? Electric, dude. It's it's great. There's a lot of like really popular bands in the area that uh you know are regional regional acts. You know like uh, Root Shocks and Vista Funk. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I Street there's Street Family, Street Street Family, New Days, Big Rise. There's a lot of people that are doing their thing around here and help each other out. That's the big thing mm-hmm. for Everybody's us. That's how that's how we kind of led to where we are right now. And there's there's just so much of each other community. community. So is there an in particular place that you guys would love to perform one day? Red Rocks. Red Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> MSG. That's, that's, that's where it started, I was yeah. gonna say. Red Rocks is up there. Or like a late night well, show. I always imagine like bands make their big breaks. So I do, yeah, that would be sweet. I always <laughs> imagine. Uh-huh. Like, I want to play, uh, I want to play halftime at the Super Bowl. Like, <laughs> yeah. set. Yo, that's dreaming. Yo, oh, that's nice. big. Abbreviated that's... set so you get to half-ass it. Like. Well, <laughs> with the way that your guys' album is, I would not be shocked if that actually did happen because I can see it Thank like you. listening to that I can see like huge amount of crowds like when I saw Chili Peppers in Buffalo everyone's <laughs> passing a doobie and then it was like free love and that's what I think I love about your guys' music is it brings out like you throw away all the bullshit of like you know people killing each other the politics everything it just brings everyone closer together. That's what I loved about your guys' album. So we do appreciate yeah, thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you. I hear that. Um, you recently won a Sammy. I heard as uh, Best Jam Band. Yeah. And you guys were nominated two years before that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And That's right before I joined up. Yeah. yeah. So you guys won it. Congratulations on your Sammy. Thank That's you. awesome. Thank you. What was that like? We were scrambling to find everybody before we got awesome. on stage. Like everybody, like we, we were all mingling. How about like? Yeah, you know, it came up sooner than we yeah. thought. It was yeah, going we thought it was later in the ceremony. So I ran up there, started mumbling, and then, <laughs> and then I think that what what you what you'd want to hear is exactly what Sean said. <laughs> and, uh, and it was that it was one of the more humbling moments in our life. Yeah, one of the yeah. most humbling moments in our life, and you know we could. It's we super unreal. That was that was the great that was the great pleasure of our life. Like. The fact that you know somebody wanted to award you for something creative that you did, like fuck, yeah, right. super inspiring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. it was heavy, man. Um, so how do you guys balance um your music life with um obligations like work and family and friends? Make it a priority. Yeah, it's not good. And uh, yeah, that band that band just, have every single guy in this band cares about this band so much that it's like the first thing. You know, like whatever yeah. comes up in the schedule of uh, each individual, it's like, well, this is first. Yep. You know? We're lucky enough to have our health yeah, and our family yeah. members to have their health and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I mean, we, 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 we can stay on a schedule. We all work full time jobs. So, I mean, and everyone's like, dedicated. Yeah, that means a lot. Everybody's dedicated to the band. I mean, if that comes, if that, if that, you know, results in us getting a couple less hours of sleep every night, so be it. Right. right. Amen. Um, if you guys could no longer play music anymore, what would you guys be doing? <laughs> I know, that's a toughie. Know. That's a toughie. Yeah. That is a toughie. Something it by is. the beach. It's a toughie. I'd probably start a... Yes. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> like an ideal world. <laughs> I'd say uh, stamp collection. <laughs> I wouldn't be as happy, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, definitely not. I was talking to somebody, I was like, <laughs> yeah, beat Batman. <laughs> I'd probably be like a lawyer or We'd something. We'd be so yeah, fucking man. boring if we yeah. had music. We'd be yeah. the most boring dudes you've ever met in your entire life. Yeah. <laughs> What piece of advice or criticism have you guys received that kind of stuck with you to take you from where you guys were when you first started to now, would you say, stuck with you the most? Andrew Greeson. I was yeah. just going to say, you, know, the you guys need reason. work. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I remember. So honestly, pushed it so much. So. Yeah. There was this moment I said something about B. I was like, no, B's an incredible drummer. And Andrew goes, no. 
<laughs> you guys got, you he's, guys, he's every good. one of you, yeah, he's, he's good, good all of us. but every one of you can become better, like, that's huge, you know? Yeah, I, I think he just, he really instilled us in that value that the, you know, you guys aren't even close to being the best dudes around. So not, that we, <laughs> not that we thought or thought that. But we thought we, we, we were a lot more confident on our arrangements and what we were doing until we got into the studio and realized that like you know to record your music and to have it go through a live sound system are two different things. You know, those dudes just kept it real with us. You yeah, know? And, and like it, it was it was like a it was like a tough love kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, no pulled punches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like you got like you know you guys want to do the work. You guys can probably be an mm -hmm. okay band. Right. It's appreciated too. Yeah, right. They they could have just said, oh yeah, like, you guys right. have, you guys right. have a decent <laughs> band if you want to put the work in. You know. So what's your goals for the next five years, guys? Um, is there a plan for another full-length album, another EP, and do you guys have a tour coming up? We're writing right now. Um, we're starting, we have another full-length that's in the works right now. Our the new single, Angel in My Pocket, is going to be on that, um, the new record. Um, it's going to be done at Morrison, working with Andrew Greeson and Jocko again, and Jose Verona. Maybe. I'd like Honestly, to play, play him uh, 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 out of state a lot more. Maybe getting right. some bigger festival bills out of Take state. Take over the Northeast. You know, because I, I know that we'll be touring around the area very soon and getting into the smaller venues and cutting our teeth. But we'd like to make enough of an impact in these regions to where we're playing in the bigger festivals by that time. Yeah. You know, maybe getting a little bit more, you know, press radio play, all that good stuff. But I'm, I'm happy. We're happy. Yeah. Where we are right Absolutely. now. Right. Well, I mean, we want to keep having fun, like in the immediate. Exactly. We don't want to. Yeah, we don't want to freaking over. Like, you want to just worry about that as much. Really right. 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 So, what message do you guys want to bring to your listeners, and what do you want people to remember the most of Barroom philosophers? I just be yourself. You know, be, con be content in who you are. Be yourself. Have fun. Keep pushing your, your your creative limits, your creative boundaries. Never be afraid to yeah. learn. You know, always ask questions. <laughs> yes, you know, questions. This is true. Yeah. Seek answers. I think I think we're trying to figure out who we are through this music. So that's and through the people that we meet. Yeah. Yeah. Through the music. And, so, and, and tip your bartender. <laughs> <laughs> we're coming up to a close, guys. Um, I want to thank you again, Bar and Philosophers, for sitting in with us doing this interview you guys can follow them on facebook and on instagram is there any other um uh, Philosophers. check us out on youtube barrowphilosophers.com spotify uh apple you can buy stuff on amazon all right all, all right. that good stuff iTunes. okay and i also want to thank funk and waffles for having us here but thank you guys for watching uh please like subscribe and follow me on instagram we're going to be having barroom philosophers play tonight at funk and waffles we're gonna show off some of their six skills. Six skills. Thank you. All right, this is Kyle, and thanks for watching the Kyle Crockles.